you know when you get in a country and you you don't even remember how you even got in that school you feel so lost you feel everything is new of course you're in a foreign country i didn't even have money in my account i had like 700 kenya shillings hello hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel <laughs> hello hello guys welcome back to my youtube channel if you're watching me for the first time my name is valentine mokani and karibu karibu sana tunapenda wageni <laughs> oh my god don't take life so seriously just joke around even if you're talking to yourself okay life is never that serious all right if life is never that what yes so Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In case you're watching me for the first time, my name is Valentine Mukeni and Karibu Sana. Thank you so much. This is a home of good vibes and sharing experiences and learning as we are growing. <laughs> growing, growing old. I was just 10 years the other day and now I'm 23. <sighs> okay, who feels that pressure? You know, like you're growing old. Anyway, that's not the point, but today's video i'll be talking about challenges or my life my journey as an international student in the uk i'm a kenyan by birth and by everything because <laughs> i was born in kenya and then i came to the uk in 2020 during covid 19 october 29th and let me tell you marina i was coming for in a foreign country for the first time and i had so many expectations but the expectations change immediately i arrived at the airport so if you want to listen to you know to get more about this tea and everything that has been happening for me as an international student stay tuned okay so number one weather okay when i arrived in the airport guys i'll be showing you the type of cloth that i was wearing when i left nairobi jomo kenyatta international airport I arrived in the airport and it was cold. Huh? I don't know what to say. It was freezing. It was during um it was at the beginning of winter I think because October is autumn. Autumn. I don't know how to say it. But the winter was approaching and it was raining. Let me tell you it was so cold and the type of cloth I was wearing could not even prevent me from the cold. But that was not even the major problem. The guy picked us up and I think he's from Kenya as well and then he left us as far distance from my accommodation. And not that it was far from my accommodation, but it was far from where I was supposed to collect key. You know when you get in a country and you don't even remember how you even got in that school. It's something you feel like I don't know how to explain that feeling, but you feel so lost you feel everything is new of course you're in a foreign country so i and it was raining so this lady i think she's called redima thapa she comes and i noticed her because i was i had enrolled myself in a program that was called ready program and she was our program manager but she didn't know me she took me actually i was in my other classmate so he took she took us to the reception which took like 15 minutes and we are dragging all our bags there i mean who else would do that if not you <laughs> so we drag all the bags to the reception and then we came back even brunel concourse reception and then we came back to south oak it's like where we had been dropped by the car it was very challenging it was during covid and i didn't even have money in my account i had like 700 kenya shillings there is no food everything you have to order online you can't even go outside we were very lucky we met this girl she's called maggie akatuchanua unajua when you are kenya unapenda kutuchanua na and then she was like tunde me little to know something you can eat so i went and using my card the kenyan card um i go and then i buy bread because they're like bread with a bread i can eat it like for a week i don't know if that money was enough she actually helped us to buy food i'm sleeping in this room and it's you know i could hear the you know the diwali things that the firecrackers and the fireworks and everything and i remember waking up amina and i thought 
like the school is being invaded by shooting and all that. That's crazy because I've never had those things, to be honest. I'm just coming from the village and even if I had gone to a high school in the city, I still didn't have that, you know, that experience of like fireworks and all that. And I never even used to watch maybe so I couldn't even fathom. So that was the first thing, okay? Coming from the airport, trying to find the kids, going to your accommodation and then trying to sort how you're going to get food. Okay, so um, after a few days, the money was set in my account and let me tell you guys, I was freezing. It was so confusing. It getting late at, at 4 p.m. It took long for me to know what type of clothes should I invest on. Like I, I used a lot of money to buy jacket. Now because you have me here, I want to tell you before you travel or if you come to the UK, it couldn't in you just look online or ask your friends who who knows these things, they really help you. But the thing is, even if I had like, you know, British friends don't really understand like when you're saying you're freezing. You're just like this and for them it's hot. You know, so I would really advise you to invest in good warm clothes, okay? But that depends on how you react to cold and all that. For me, I freeze and I feel like, you know, a meat that has been put in a freezer, that's how bad it was. Actually, it's even a big deal till today. The second thing was about um, Wi-Fi. How do you use a uh, line? We call them SIM card in our, in Kenya. Like... How do you call it? Credit, a line. So on campus they were giving for free, so I got one. But I used to top up. So with time I realized the best line to use. Like now I use Vodafone because you can travel in most cities in the UK and they use sufficient data. I have two lines, like one for like a mobile and that one I used to call home until they introduced Stockholm's app to me that is an app that you can call directly by just opening it up and you can call and you can call your friends and family members and you can talk for long hours compared to using like a normal sim card so every month they deduct like let's say 10 pounds 10 data bad and that one saves me for like a whole month you see gift card is also another nice um sim card you can use to call uk or even to have your data bad sorted another thing i needed to download city mapper because that's the best um google app you can use to like locate the places that you're going to because i realized that you know um, being in the uk you're just doing things by yourself you have to know where you're going if you go to the station especially the big train station or bus stations Everybody's just on their phone. I learned to be more independent because I needed to like look on where I'm going, where to get this or that. Start living your own life. You're living in your own room. You know, no one, everybody is just minding their own business. You can even die in your room like no one cares, you know. Then homesickness kicks in. Sometimes you call back home and maybe there's internet issues. It's crazy, guys. It's so you feel so sick you want to go home but then you don't even have an option because even when you go home what are you going to do there you understand so yeah and um, i had to face the reality i had to feel that homesickness call my mom call my best friend call my best friend call my sis you know just like talk to them and show them the things that i'm buying show them around and i wish i could have started youtube channel by then another thing i was just doing things all by myself and then i'm walking to town and then you see these people like jehovah witness they come and give you some papers about jesus and so they introduced me to church okay because i couldn't see churches and if they were there they were far away from where i was living it was during covid it's called blw and i've talked about it so many times so from there at least i started knowing people and at least you can talk to you know your cell leader you can tell them about how you're feeling so i made friends also through education in my first year and then my second year was going to first year and joining my environmental science class where i met lovely people you know who've been such a great team to work with environmental science students 
shout out to you guys because there's just few of us in class and we just take care of each other lecturers are so nice so supportive in my first year i am trying to draft a cv and the only experience i had was prefect or would even say i was a farmer <laughs> The CV that didn't make sense. Like you're trying to come up with a CV so that you can get to work, okay? Which was a challenge because I was trying to apply for jobs and the CVs were not good looking. And if you have any problem with forming your CV, there's this guy and it's a Huku UK. He has very nice content for YouTube Huku UK and anakonyesha jinsi ya kutengeneza CV ya uko Kenya ya uko UK. So when you follow his content you'll be able to understand more about the life in the UK. It was a new thing for me, okay? And people take time to learn. Someone will just stay get in a country and learn everything at once. But someone will take centuries to learn. So <laughs> So I can't blame myself. I found this volunteer job. The role I took for volunteering as a student ambassador opened so many doors and actually built me to be who I am right now as a student. Because as a now as a, a volunteer student ambassador in the Brunel Pathway College, now when I come to Brunel University, I was able to like apply for other Brun student ambassador job. That is um event student ambassador, STEM student ambassador, unibody student ambassador. I became a course rep. I became, um, I also volunteered in other activities. So I think for me to build myself and getting myself from feeling homesick, feeling like I don't know things, and also in the process of adapting to this new environment, I also took advantage of the voluntary work that you weren't paid. But then from there now you at least you have something to put in the CV that shows that you've done something in the UK and by then now you're able to apply so many jobs in it did cleaning jobs, you know, and also it was a shock because you're paid a lot of money like per hour. So um you're getting paid ten pounds per hour. That's like one thousand. One thousand will take three days in Kenya. So for me it took time to settle in the UK basically and to understand the whole of the culture. Culture shock was another thing. I saw gas smoking and I've never I mean I used to hear but I've never seen like gas smoking smoking like literally smoking. And then I was standing somewhere one day I was standing just in front of the lecture center and then this a uh, lady approaches me and they're like, do you have a lighter? I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> How do they assume like everybody smoke? Anyway, um, Kasha Shok and all that. He could find Unga in the supermarket and I could find some Sukuma. They, ca they call them sweet heart cabbages. So I just pretend they are kids. Sukuma wiki. So I make that one with Ugali. I can eat Ugali the whole year to be honest. So this Food has not been a very big deal for me because I've been buying, you know, rice and dengu in the supermarket, but the taste is not the original one. So basically, um, me coming from, you know, just coming to the airport and getting myself to the accommodation, learning how to cook new things, getting used to, you know, that type of food that you can see there and you have to eat it. And then culture shock. That process of getting friends, getting to write your CV, a perfect CV that an employer will see it and think about you even for a second, and getting a job has been a journey. I also wanted to talk about living alone. Living alone has also some challenges because I moved off campus because campus is very expensive. And then also you need to move from one place to another during season. So when you're done with the with the spring season, then you have to move to summer you have to move to summer accommodation. Then from summer accommodation, then you need to start again from the other season. So that moving from one place to another like a pastoralist <laughs> is not good looking. So 
I prefer just staying in one house like one year, you know, focus, do your things there, and then look for a place that is closer to campus and maybe closer to town because it's easier that way. You be, you know, you can run to town and come back, do your shopping and, and all that. Another thing I wanted to talk about, and it's so unfortunate that I'm going through this, is discrimination. You know, like I've been in a house where I don't know what to say, whether to say it in my YouTube channel because I like good vibes and life becomes so difficult when you're living with people who treat you like you are not a human being. When you live with people who, who feel like they are better than you, and the things they do to you, even if you speak up, the landlord doesn't even care. So it's, 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 it's discouraging. I don't know whether it's my mind or what, but so many patterns, you know. I mean, I'm not a fool. So when so many patterns are happening and people are doing them, you can see they are directing to you. Even if you're not, even if you've let, you haven't done something wrong, it's always you. They make sure that it's always you and you can't say anything about it. Then you realize there is a problem. So um, I try to be positive. I try to be assertive. And I'm so grateful for the few friends that I have. My environmental science students, um, classmates. Thank you so much. It actually feels good to be outside, you know. But guess what, guys? It's few minutes to to 8 p.m. It's few minutes to 8 p.m. But the sun is there. Munaona, but we just said, sir, that's UK weather. What I do, like, like living, living alone. I like going to the parks because I I like green environment and actually feel that fresh air. You know, I don't go outside with makeup on, but. I was creating a video and my head is bursting because I've been through so much and I've been a bit stressed so I'm going outside and it's just so beautiful the environment is so serene and there's a lot of peace of mind I have my rosary because you know I like praying the rosary while drinking some rosary so it has really helped me to overcome some challenges okay so let me say i've not been like gone through so much bad things happening to me i was diagnosed with eye viral viral infection in my eye which i felt like my dreams were shattered because i could not see well with one of my left eye but I took medication, I took so many breaks, I didn't even study for like half a semester. But you know what, I applied for ECs, um, extenuating circumstances. So if you get sick in, a, in the uni, you feel for extenuating circumstances so that they allow you to submit assessment or rather assignments at a later date than the rest of the students. Okay, so... Um, thank you so much for watching my video guys. Help me to end this video from here um, Expect more content International student content and don't forget to subscribe. Let's get to 5,500 subscribers at the end of this week It's possible, right? It's very possible. Anyway, till the next time guys Bye